Sooner or later, your hard drive is going to fail. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. My name's Randy. You're watching Go Midwest Fishing, where we talk about fishing, camping, and technology. Today we're going to talk about hard drives. If you're wondering, what in the heck does that have to do with fishing? Well, I've been noticing lately that more and more people are bringing cameras along when they go going fishing and recording their fishing trips. I personally have several cameras on a boat, and after fishing all day, I'll come home with about 100 gigabytes worth of footage. Well, that quickly fills up your hard drive space on your computer, so what I've been doing is turning to a lot of these small external hard drives. This is a 2 terabyte hard drive that plugs in via USB cord. Alright, I recently did a video where I turned a cargo trailer into a ice fishing house, and I spent months recording video for that. Had it all on a drive similar to this. And when I went to edit the video, my computer did not recognize this hard drive. No matter what I did, it plugged in, it's just like it wasn't there. Alright, so if you have this problem where your computer won't recognize your hard drive, uh, the first thing you want to do is come over here. I have a, I'm running a PC right now, a desktop computer with Windows 10. And down here in the search, you can type in disk management. And you'll end up getting to a screen that looks like this and it'll list all your hard drives on here that the computer knows it's there. So um, when you initially plug it in you go to your file manager and you look on the side here where all your hard drives and everything show up and if it's not there I said go to this disk management and if it's still not there then you have a problem with your hard drive. So first what we got to determine is if there's any mechanical damage with your hard drive. So what you're going to do is, you know, plug it into your USB port and listen to it. If you're hearing a lot of scratching, clanking, you know, just really nasty sounds, you probably have some kind of a hard drive failure. Uh, some metal in there is bent or whatever and you're scratching up your disk. In that case, you'll probably have to send it in and have a professional try to recover it. It's going to cost a lot and they may not be able to get anything off it if it's actually damaged. Now on the other hand, if you plug it in and it's completely silent, it ain't doing anything, or in my case, I could hear it spinning up like it was running, but it just wouldn't recognize it. All right, here's the easy fix. Well, it's quick anyway, and it's cheap. Um, this here is just a two and a half inch hard drive that's enclosed in a plastic case. So you're gonna have to get out a little knife or something and you're gonna crack this case open and on the inside, you're going to see something like this. So it's just your regular two and a half inch hard drive that you'd see installed inside your computer. These smaller ones are usually inside a laptop. Um, my bigger uh, desktop here has the three and a half inch ones internal. And what you're going to see on the front end of this thing it has a couple slots here. And um, when this is installed inside your computer, is connected via a SATA cord, which looks like this. Um, it's a little bit different than the USB cord. Here's the difference. I'll show you a close-up picture of the, the two, what they look like. So if, when this is inside your computer, it just uh, this plugs right in to the front like that, and then it plugs into your motherboard. It's also got another little slot here where you plug the power cord to power it. That's all there is and your computer will recognize it. Well, since it's not inside your computer, it needs a SATA to USB circuit board. And the one that came on here was fried. I threw it away. I didn't realize I was going to make this video. Um, but I have a picture of it here in the computer I can pull up quick and show you. All right, It looks just like one of these here. And all that does is plug right into the front of here. It plugs into your SATA and your power connector. And out the top, um, there's a little connector where this cord will plug in. It's actually a little bit different shape. It's got like two little tongs on it. So it plugs in there, and on the other end is your USB, which plugs into your computer and then just you know recognizes it as an external hard drive. So in 90% of the cases, this little circuit board here is fried and that's your problem. There's actually nothing wrong with your hard drive. So how do you get the files off of this now that you got it all apart? 
Uh, there's two ways to do it. Uh, first, I'm going to show you the easy way. So if you're not real good with computers and you're afraid of cracking open in the case of your computer, this is a real easy, simple way to do it. Uh, what you need is this right here. This is called a docking station. Um, it has two slots in it right here. See, it's got this little slot for a two and a half inch drive, and then this thing opens up, and you can fit a three and a half inch drive in there. Um, this one can hold two different drives. On the back side of it, you just got a cord with a USB plug. It's got a power cord, so you have to plug it into the wall, and then it's just got an on and off switch. So what's inside of here is the same as this uh, SATA to USB circuit board that's in there, and uh, since you plug it in, it'll also power the hard drive. So you just line it up so it's in there correctly like this. Shove it down in and plug this into the wall, plug this into your computer and it should just pop up like it always did before as an external hard drive. And now you can take, you can either just keep it like this and just run it off of this thing or you can, you know, copy the files off there, put it on a dis different drive. So if you're worried about your, you know, if your drive's not good or something. So that docking station is about $20 off Amazon. So I'll put the link below. You can get one if you want. You don't need uh, an expensive one. They do come a little higher end than that. This is like one of the cheapest ones they make. And if all you're doing is trying to recover the one drive, that's all you need. Now, if you don't want to spend any money, there is another way to do it. But you have to know a little bit about computers. What you're going to do is you're going to open up <laughs> the inside of your computer. So take the side of it off. And inside, you'll find your uh, internal hard drives. And if you have a, this will work if you have a desktop, if you have a laptop, uh, you're going to need a docking station. Uh, but for the desktop, um, I personally have a 256 gigabyte uh, solid state drive in here that runs all my programs and everything like that. Then I have a couple other um, bigger hard drives for storage. So right now I have three other ones installed in there. It's getting pretty tight. I keep shoving them in there trying to get more storage. Um, if I ever get a new computer, I'm going to build my own computer and make one that can hold a lot of disks. Because this one's already, like, I'm putting disks where they shouldn't be. <laughs> but anyway, um, those hard disks inside of my computer are, you know, the same as this. They're just three and a half inches, so a little bit bigger. Um, and you have the same connectors on the front here. So if you have uh, a dedicated hard drive that's running all your program stuff, you can unhook your storage hard drives. And you're just going to unplug the SATA cord off of one and plug where the power cord is and just plug them onto here instead. And now it'll recognize it as an internal drive and you can pull the files off, use them, do whatever you want, move them somewhere else. And then when you're done, just disconnect this and plug your other drive back in. Or if you have a spare SATA cord laying around, you actually get one of these for about five bucks on Amazon again. Um, there's slots on your motherboard where these plug in. You'll see they look like the end here, this is kind of with a little L shape on the connector. You just plug it in there, same deal, plug it in here, and then your power supply should have some extra um, plugs on them that you can just plug into here and power it up. And in that case, you could just, if you find a spot to store this in your computer, you can just leave it in your computer and run it that way instead of an external drive. Or again, you can just, you know, copy the files off here, put it somewhere else so they're safe. So that's all there really is to it. It's that circuit board on top, the SATA to USB board, that burns out all the time. Most of these external hard drives, um, if they have a problem, that's going to be the case. Um, you know, some people send these in and it costs up to like $500 to have someone else pull the information off these and send it back. But you can do it for 20 bucks, or if you have some of the cables, you can do it for free, actually, if you want to crack into your computer. All right, that brings us to backups. Yes, I did not back up my file, so I was in trouble there. I was getting really nervous, starting to sweat there. I'm like, did I lose several months worth of videos? And after a lot of research, I figured out how to do this and I got all my files, all was good. But with that said, they recommend having three backups. So you want your original on whatever disk you have, a separate disk with your backup copy, and then a third copy in the cloud. So doing an online backup. Uh, I already was running out of disk space as it was and I couldn't afford to have double my disk space to have another copy here. So I didn't, 
I've tried online backups in the past and it just got way too expensive. Um, but after doing some research, I found one that works really well. If you want to back it up to the cloud, uh, I'll show you here. It's called, it's called Backblaze. And what I really like about this is it's unlimited data for only $6 a month. And if you pay it for the year, it's $60 a year, so it's $5 a month. And this works good for me because I currently have about six terabytes of information I need to back up. And still only the, I'm paying five bucks a month, I paid it for the year. And what's cool is if anything ever fails, you just go onto the website and you can download your files right from there. But in my case, say I have a two terabyte hard drive that fails, well that's gonna take like a month to download all that information. So what they'll do is they'll actually send you a, a flash drive or if it's too much info, they'll send you a, actually an external hard drive just, just like this and you can plug it in, download all your files and then send it back. Um, it's completely free to do that, to send you the hard drive as long as you send it back. If you keep it, they'll charge you for the hard drive. All right, one more bonus little tip here. <laughs> if you start adding all these hard drives, like I got uh, currently got four hard drives inside my computer and four hard drives externally plugged into my computer. And when I did this, uh, I actually bought a new 10 terabyte internal hard drive that I was trying to consolidate some of my, my uh, files. And I put that in, everything's working good, and then my internet went out. I could not get it to connect to the internet. And so I'm playing around with it. I started hooking you know, drives here and there, and all of a sudden the internet popped back on. All right, so I connect everything back up and the internet kept going out. It's like, what in the world was the problem? Well, after some research, I only found you know, one place that described a problem, which was it. Most of them were saying all kinds of other stuff that had nothing to do with it. But uh, this computer came with a 460 watt power supply. And when I added that last hard drive in, uh, it was taking too much power. So what it was doing is taking power away from the more non-essential items like my network adapter card. So every time I had all my hard drives plugged in, that would quit working. So I ended up going and buying a 850 watt power supply, installing that and now everything works beautiful. So it's just a matter of being underpowered. So if you're running a big processor with a bunch of hard drives and you got all kinds of things hooked in, your computer might not be able to power all that. So uh, if it ain't acting right, uh, check on the power supply. You might need a little extra power. Pretty simple. Um, the one that came with it's you know the cheaper version. It has like a whole stack of wires just coming straight out the back. Uh, the new one I got is cool. It's called a modular power supply, and it has uh, little plugs in the back where you can plug individual cords in. So you only plug in the ones you need, and your computer ain't full of extra cords that you're not even using. Uh, again, it's it wasn't that hard to do. Uh, I know a little bit about computers, but not that much. Uh, it's my first time doing it, and I was able to install it uh, without a problem. So uh, these are all things that you could probably do yourself and don't need to send in and pay someone to do. It's uh, fairly simple. All right, everyone, I hope some of this information was useful. I know it's a little bit different than I usually do, but uh, besides fishing, I, I do like making videos and you know making my fishing videos and camping videos and that kind of stuff. And I know a lot of you guys out there like making the videos too. So I got lots of great tips on video editing and little tips and tricks I use to make it go easier. So if that's something that interests you, please let me know. Would you like to see uh, some more of these videos sprinkled in throughout? Or should I just stick to fishing and you know, screw all this technology stuff? Uh, uh, just please let me know because you know, I like making both kinds of videos. And if you want to see more of this stuff, uh, if you like making cool videos, I got some really good tips. So just let me know if you want uh, some more of that information. All right, everyone. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.